This holiday, instead of giving them something nice, why not gift them somewhere nice? During the IHG Hotels and Resorts Cyber Sale, you can do just that and save. Shopping is easy in the IHG One Rewards app, where you'll save 20% on travel across 6,000 plus global destinations. And if you want to gift yourself somewhere nice, go ahead. You'll earn more and save more during the cyber sale. Check out all the deals at ihg.com backslash cyber sale. Terms apply. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Strikeout Beer, the Monday night live stream with your pals, Alan Rapid Dave. I'm Rapid Dave. I'm Alan. Well, hello, Alan. How are you, buddy? <laughs> oh, just living the dream, brother. Living the dream. Uh, as we just get ready just to go full force face first into this shenanigans. I know, right? It's going to get out of hand. I can feel it already. Yeah, I was sitting there. We were kind of cleaning up the, the sunroom wherever we have all our crafts and crap going on. Liz was like, we need to clean it up. I was like, all right, fine. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, I'm kind of tired. I could probably go to bed here in a minute. I go, unless I get the call to ball. And then I just happened to pull out my phone. And I missed it like five by five minutes. I was like, I mean, I'm down. You're like, so are we doing this? <laughs> Did I get? I came all the way over here and didn't get a bottle opener. You want to tell the fine folks what we're having tonight? Uh, we are busting open the 2022 edition of a uh, Bourbon County brand stout, stout aged in bourbon barrels by Goose Island. Um, let's see here: notes of vanilla, toffee, chocolate, burnt sugar, and dried fruit. Uh, they say this develops in the bottle for up to five years. We just waited a year. We we couldn't wait the five years plus it was it was the only beer that we had it's from 2020 no 2022 oh bro i got i asked if you had a 2021 that's what i got got 2022 ah all right do you not have 2022 no this is the last one you already opened it yeah this some bitch is open okay well i've got 2022 you've got 2020 yeah uh, i'm gonna let it sit in that now I was quite nervous whenever I looked. I go, well, how much? How big is this bottle? You know what I mean? And I was sitting there looking. I was looking for the uh, the content, you know, in ounces and whatnot. But anyways, I I went down and I saw it. I go, oh, it's fourteen point two. I go, it says percent, not ounces. I said, yeah, so fourteen point two percent alcohol by volume for mine. It's a pint, one or a pint point nine fluid ounces. So I'm fourteen point three on mine, and I actually don't have a bottle opener either. So I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Look at this folks. I mean, this is as black and dark as your ex's soul. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness. I'm going to let it breathe a little bit. I think it, let me make sure. Cause I heard what he said is intense aromas of charred oak, vanilla, caramel, and smoke. So mine's slightly different. Um, you know, we we've gone through these and now people talk about how great these beers are and you know they're coveted they they get them put them in the fridge and let, let them sit there for a while and things like that and i'm pretty sure that's what happened to this one as far as um you know someone bought it i don't remember buying this especially not back in 2020 so someone bought it gave it to us or someone brought it over and left it here so a lot of cool friends that we have obviously you know zach and scott from uh Blue Bucket Brewing two dudes one bucket i don't know what the brew fighters they go by so many names I can't rule out that they didn't give me this. And just like, you know, we're talking about them giving us free beers and, and stuff to try. Alan met up with Scott the other day and uh, got a bunch of free beers, I think from Arkansas and Northwest Northeast uh, Oklahoma. So looking forward to those. Now, normally, you know, you, with some beer like this, you want to have it not room temperature, not freezing cold. You want it like 50 degrees, you know, about 50, 55 there's a chaotic game going on right now, but, uh, you know, so I've been letting mine warm up for a little bit and I've been letting it air out because I just, you know, I'm not, go, I'm not taking this thing to pound town. Cause let me tell you, if I try to take this to pound town, it's going to take me to pound town and I don't want to go. You don't pound this beer. This beer pounds you mm-hmm. is, is what happens with that. Like mother Russia. Oh, <laughs> oh buddy. I that- can smell mine. Like, it smells That's, delicious. Yeah, it's surprisingly not bad, dude. I, I don't know. You got to watch this replay. 
on the Cowboys. We got the Cowboys and Charger game up right now. It's Monday night. We were watching. I watched the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros again. Uh, spoiler alert: Texas Rangers are undefeated right now in the postseason. Uh, I have not done a, a recording of the Ranger Roundup out of fear of jinxing the Rangers, so I, w- I again will not be doing it. <laughs> I was going to do no, a post game every single time. I was going to do a post freaking game every single time, and I go, I can't do it. They're on fire. So yeah, I hear you. Mm. Uh, superstition. It's a it's a motherfucker. We were right. talk, we were talking about that on the baseball podcast a while back, and like how superstitious like uh, baseball players are. And you're like, ah, you know, I'm not too superstitious and this and that. But when it comes down to nut cutting time, yeah, no, I. Uh, it same thing with hockey, right? Like I don't wash my uh, oh, the socks or something like that. I don't know. At first, I was like, yeah, I'm washing my jersey, washing my socks. Um, you know, for breezing the s out of all my stuff because I didn't want it to stink. It just stunk up my bag so bad, and then stunk up the car and. But after a while, you're like, no, nah, you know, you, you score a couple goals or you have a crazy play. And <laughs> Team wins a few games and you're like, you know what? Like you forgot to take care of business, yeah. but then you you, you you eke out that win or the puck bounces perfect for you. And then all of a sudden you're like, eh, all right, maybe we'll just a little bit longer. You know what? That guy, he, he stayed off me a little bit because he couldn't handle the couldn't handle the musk <laughs> my, my musk he couldn't handle it so oh, yeah okay. no 100 but i do i do have a little bit of a bone to pick with rangers fans okay so yeah let's go yeah. rangers fan talk let's do it right out of the gate i am sick and tired of hearing everybody go you know if we don't win it's okay because we weren't supposed to be here anyways so this is just all gravy shut the hell up okay First of all, now this was all before they went up 2 0, right? This is, mm-hmm. you know, but they were already, they're already counting their losses series, for right? Astros. They're just like, you know, if, if we don't win, it's it's okay. You know, it's not that big of a deal. We weren't supposed to be here anyways. You know, we played awful at the end of the year. We shouldn't have been in the playoffs, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Okay. No. Look, maybe you weren't supposed to be here yet, but you know what? You're here and you're only here so often. You only get so many cracks at it. And you're trying to tell me that, it, let's say the series was going the other way around and mm-hmm. the Rangers were down 2 nothing, And they say they get swept by the Astros. Everyone would be like, oh, but that's okay. We were supposed to. No, everybody would be pissed and whining and crying and complaining. And they cheated and blah, 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 blah. Shut they up. Do, they do cheat quite a they, bit. Oh, they cheated once, okay? Um, One, you think that's the first time like you know when what's his name got caught doing blow first time i've never tried it before in my life oh yeah okay that's cool <laughs> that one time that year yeah they did it that year but then they got caught and they're like first oh, time that well, day right you first know time. but i'm just like just just stop like for example like right now enjoy it you know my lines are playing great right now we're five and one if we find ourselves in the, in the playoffs in the super bowl I'm going to be like, well, you know, we really weren't supposed to be here this year. So, you know what? We made it, and that's all that matters. No, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be happy we made it. But if we lose, I ain't going to be happy. I tell you what, I thought they were going to lose today uh, just watching the game. You know, they went up four runs in the first inning, and then Jonah Heim tacked on another uh, dinger, I think, in the third, if I'm not mistaken. But they, the Astros chipped and chipped back, got back in the game, bases loaded in one of the innings, and almost, I was like – and then even in the the eighth when Chapman was pitching, I was like, "This is, we're in trouble." And then, it's always dicey when Chapman plays, right? You know, you had a guy get on first. You had Altuve. I'm like, dude, I'm looking. I looked at Liz. I go, they're about to lose this game. I go, if they put this kid on, momentum is just a, it's a real thing, and it, yeah. it could be dangerous. But they've they've stayed up. They've they've eked out these two wins in Houston. Houston has trouble playing good at home. Um, they That's, their record is not great at home, even though they have a losing record at home. Which is crazy because, you know, what is it, Bregman? Bregman's the king of, like, 329-foot home runs. All you got to do is hit it kind of hard to left field, and the damn ball goes out. The stupid porch they have, the Crawford Crawford porch. It still counts. Yeah. I mean, it's so dumb. Like, I don't know. Like, you could probably hit one out over there. You know what I'm saying? But you're not a pull hitter anyway, so. I'm I'm a dead pull hitter, man. Yank it up the middle all the time. Yank it it right (laughs) up the middle. But, yeah, I don't. I'm sitting there watching the Astros, and you know the the team is, I would say, pretty stacked. You know, as far as hitting wise, but they just, man, pitching has been great. Eovaldi was wonderful today. Montgomery's been putting the body on the line, and all throughout the playoffs, he made that diving catch, um, 
last week and then this week he had that that liner up the middle it was yesterday had a liner up the middle he flashed the leather got it so the pitching has been there chapman's always squirrely as s like for real like just squirrely as s. Know, right um, he can't feel the strike zone yeah it was crazy today though because like i turned the game on right it just starts and i was like oh i gotta go use the bathroom go in the bathroom for a couple minutes i come back and it's four nothing i'm like what the it just happened i popped like, down to play like I, I can't remember what i was doing i went and did something and i was like i you know i might even put on like rocket league and like played one match it's like i'll be right back <laughs> it's like four nothing that escalated quickly but uh, whoa you know and then towards the end of the game leclerc couldn't throw a strike he threw like i don't know eight or 12 straight balls and you're like <laughs> oh god come on just shoot me now and i but i did give lizzie the like you know the well you know, at least they took one out of two in Houston. That's why I started. Like, it was towards the end. I was like, you know, I was that guy. But I was like let down, like genuinely let down. I was like, son of a look, bitch. But look, we weren't supposed to be here anyway. So if we lose this game, it's okay. Like, yeah. We're just yeah. playing with house money at this point in time. I'm sorry. Even when I'm I'm up big and I'm playing with house money, I'm still pissed when I lose. Like it's it's so it, uh, you luckily let me knock on some wood here we go, right there. Luckily we haven't had to worry about that yet in the playoffs because they are undefeated in the wild card, undefeated in the ALDS, and now two games up on the Astros, undefeated so far in the ALCS. We'll see what uh they're traveling up to Arlington tomorrow. Tomorrow's a road day, and then yeah. the, the games resume on Wednesday about seven o'clock. So we'll probably have them on throughout the entire live stream, you know, catch us wherever you're watching us now, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, um, you know, and just hang out, watch the game with us. we got some amazing beers. If you're part of the Patreon, you already know what beers we're having. And uh, we're, we're going to post a, uh, the thank you video. I didn't do that yet because I've just been busy all weekend. It's been a hectic, hectic weekend around here. I hear you. I had a busy weekend. I posted a, posted a video the other day, though. Just a, I saw I it pop up. up. Yeah, I was up late. And, like, I should have went to bed because I was exhausted. But I was like, you know what? Let's just have a beer. Mm-hmm. And that led to another beer and another beer. And, you know, it's what it does, right? Um, next thing I know, I'm posting anonymous videos in, in the Duck group wearing my Spider-Man helmet, you know? Uh, and it, I, they're not, obviously. Yes, it's it's posted anonymous. It doesn't show that I my <laughs> name posted it, but you can see me. You can clearly tell it's me. But I had my Spider-Man helmet on while I was doing it. Just, you know, I was like, hey, I'm posting this anonymously out of fear of backlash as I was drinking <laughs> a beer. I was drinking a beer from Hoppenstein Brewery and uh talking shit about the bears. So you yeah. know <laughs> status quo. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, I think I I think we got uh accepted into one of these groups. So the strike up beer page finally I think it's something I don't know. I saw it come across and go, when did we ask to be part of this beer group? Because you know we were thrown out of a lot of them just because I'm like well, you know, North Texas beer group where we met that guy from outfit. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Speaking of outfit brewing this Wednesday, uh, we're going to be out at Maverick Harley in Carrollton, Texas. We, we, it's the third freaking Wednesday of the month. We go out there, hang out with Zach and Hey, listen, there's some awesome bikes. There's some hot ass women that are washing bikes, badass bikes, free beer, free drinks are a flowing, Beer is courtesy of uh, Outfit Brewing. Put the shirt on just to just to put it on today. There we go. And nice. uh, so damn soft, so comfy. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things where it's like you know it's a fun event. We go out there for about an hour or so before the the show starts, and we're we're gonna be there again this week. Hopefully, hopefully the weather's nice, not too hot. It's gorgeous right now. It's like hoodie hoodie weather. It was freezing this morning. It was so great. A little chilly. Okay. It's a little chilly all weekend. I was had the hoodie on first thing in the morning all weekend. Um, then you kind of went to I went from hoodie to windbreaker to you know regular shirt and then back to windbreaker, back to hoodie. It was just kind of like a nice little cycle. Chargers just score. I was about to say, I was like, they have to at Palmer. Or, uh no, Everett. Number seven. Yeah, Everett. Ever, yeah. Nice little pass to the tight end. Now, Friday night. Lizzie was giving me a little bit of lip and I was like, fucking Fridays, man. I hate Fridays at my house. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to have me some claws. And so I just started drinking claws. I canceled my stream labs. Right. So I don't stream anymore. You know this, right? I, I just don't do it. I don't have time. And I go, but you know what? I was like, I got this other streaming thing that I use. It's called StreamYard. 
Right. And so I set up to stream. I was like, F it. I might as well go live and give it a little test of Rue. And I didn't do it, but I have all the stuff set up to do it. So I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm like, hell, I might do it one of these one of these days where I'm sitting around with nothing to do. So I'm going to do it from here. I've got my little uh, special screens and all that kind of stuff. I can click through and right. whatnot. I'm like, all right, all right, I feel pretty good. But I ended up standing up with Dark Rizard and like Rad Brad and, you know, Dark Rizard was live. And he's sitting there playing like Guitar Hero or Rock Band or something like that. He's playing the guitar and just nailing these effing songs on like hard as shit. So I was like, you know, we're throwing out stuff to play. He, I was like, I started just going down the list, all the shit with this two on freaking Wednesdays. <laughs> and I got around to like, you know what? Let's do some harder shit. And I was like, back country goes, I fucking love that song. So he just starts going. Ape awesome. shit. I mean, he is hitting. He's, he's got it like on expert or whatever it is. And his hands are just. I'm like, how the hell do you not have like carpal tunnel or something? But <laughs> so I, ended up I haven't subscribed to a Twitch channel in like a year. And I was like, you know what? Yo, buddy. Here we go. You, hey, buddy, you get my money, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So how'd your uh, fantasy go this week? Fantasy oh. football, football, mm -hmm. not so great. I did okay, I think. I wouldn't like uh, I'm going to lose the Shane. Uh, oh, 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 the pain. The pressing is all is all hell, but I think I. No. Looking at, we're, we're looking at some L's. I'm losing in, uh, and I lost in a strikeout beer. Uh, gonna lose in pass. I'm, I lost all across the board. Dang. L's across the board. Just, I did win in hockey though. Week I, one, I got me a win as well. <laughs> Clutch that dub week one. Uh, pretty excited about that as I uh, went in dominating fashion, 256 to 170. Oh, uh, sounds like some people didn't set their lineups. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you didn't get into the NHL Fantasy League, we we started last week. We went ahead and did the draft. If you want to be part of the upcoming league that we have that is open now, the uh, NBA Fantasy League. We're drafting this week, right? That we're draft drafting is Wednesday week. night. Yeah. If you want to be in, it's free to join, but we want you to be, you know, obviously it's for the listeners, it's a listener league type thing, but also we want you to be active. We want you to set your lineups and stuff like that. We get you caught. Now, li listen, life happens. I got it. I get it. But if you're not setting your lineup for like six months, I got a problem. We got a problem there, right? So who's that lunatic? I don't know. I, maybe she's uh, Everett's uh, missus. I don't think so. I mean, they showed her when he got the touchdown. So it looked like a kid. I don't know. Is that an adult woman? That's an adult it woman. An adult, it was an adult woman. Anything's better than watching Taylor Swift. I, I just can't do it. I, like I, I don't even. I can't even watch Chiefs games anymore. They're not fun. They're not fun to watch. One, they're not even that great of a team. Can you imagine like how bad they would be if they didn't? If if Mahomes didn't have Kelsey, you know how bad they would effing be. You probably know the feeling. Sweaty, fast breathing, quick heart rate. That's a cortisol spike. It feels awful, and its imbalance is the cause of your anxiety. Rebalance Health's three-part anxiety system helps address it at the root. Rebalance Health lozenges are natural and designed for optimal absorption, providing 24-hour relief. Live life fully without feeling like you're fighting for it. Get 50% off your first month with code CALM23 at rebalancehealth.com. Come. Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander. The shows are more spectacular, the trees taller, the festivities merrier. So come for your holiday traditions or make some new ones with your friends and family in the Mile High City, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. Holy oh, just awesome. I've I've talked about my my last two Patreon videos. Just like an old school even agreed. He goes, Yeah, something's off this year. Oh yeah. Something's just not right. Yeah. You don't have anyone to catch the ball. Like it, you know, they, they kind of got the guy was starting to do good, right? He was leading them in like yards per reception, but then he got hurt this last week uh and missed. But I mean, you've got Sky Moore is non existent. That guy is just just not there. Um 
And then who they still have MVS? Yeah, I think they mentioned him. Yeah, so yeah, he must I mean, be there. That's how I, you have. You don't even know he's there, right? Yeah. You just Rishi Rice has been doing all right. The rookie, uh, he's I think he had a touchdown you, last week. Let me give you the depth chart real quick, okay? So in your number one wide receiver slot, you got Sky Moore. Behind him's Rishi Rice, then Montreal Washington. Second receiver, uh, MVS, and then Justin Watson, and then Richie James is on IR. Third, uh, Kadarius Tony, Justin Ross, and then Nico Remigio is in, on IR. I mean, for real, the only reason you know who Kadarius Tony is because he slapped like 45 balls out of the air in week one. He's a nutcase who, who faked an injury to get out of New York to end up with Kansas City to do absolutely nothing, right? At this point, Kansas City's like, dude, why don't you just pretend like you're injured again? We'd appreciate it. Um, Bro, it's crazy. And the injury bug is sweeping the NFL. Like, you know, you you saw the Niners this weekend lose to the Browns. I'm sure we'll talk more about that in depth. But, you know, Brock Purdy lost his first start that he's ever, first, you know, first time. Regular season. He's, regular he's, season. Regular season. Because he, he did lose the playoff game. You have to count that. Yeah. So. And it was CMC got hurt. Who uh, Debo got hurt. And then I think a CMC key defensive Debo. player. Yeah. Um, both of those guys got hurt. You had David Montgomery go down with a rib injury again this week uh, for the Lions. Um, Did you happen to they, catch everybody just like just they piled on and like talking just crazy shit? Like, look at Purdy. He sucks without blah, blah, blah. I go, do you think your quarterback would be better or worse if they had CMC and then lost CMC? You know what I mean? Right. L- listen, the backup. And, and, and Debo. Yeah, both. and Debo. You lost two. Against again, they were playing. They were playing Cleveland, right? Yeah. Is that the Cleveland? Yeah. Cleveland's got a good defense. Now Number their two, offense is trash, right? But their defense is actually good. Yeah. So I I don't I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're not going to win every week. They weren't going to go undefeated. Okay. They had a rough week this week, but I bet you 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 better believe they're going to take it out on the Vikings next Monday night. Oh, like, yeah. I I feel bad for the Vikings next Monday night. You yeah. know, they're gonna give it. They're, they're gonna put it up like uh like Miami did and just curb stomp the shit like, out of drop seventy on somebody. I mean, honestly, like Minnesota actually lucked out that Justin Fields dislocated his thumb or whatever it was. Because yeah. if not, they probably win. You know, without Justin Jefferson, that team's not the same. Yeah. Without you know, and they haven't been the same running wise since they let Dalvin Cook go, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Matson hasn't done much. Cam Akers is still learning the offense. He hasn't done much. Um, Addison had a touchdown this week, but you got Addison and KJ Osborne. I mean, yeah, Hawkinson's still there, but Hawkinson didn't do nothing. Yeah. It's it, when you take a player like Justin Jefferson out, it completely skews everything. Yeah. So. It was depressing. It was like sitting there watching that game. I was like, what the hell's going on? But yeah, I mean, they already talked about it. They were talking about how good, you know, one, how good Brown's defense is. And then two, you know, they're like the number, like I said, number two scoring defense. And then you flip over to uh, the, the Bears game. I'm like, I picked the Bears. Like, F it. Why not? And I was like, I, they, too. I was like, Jefferson's out. It. Let's go with the Bears. Yep. And then the Bears did what the Bears do when they lose. Uh, Lizzie was like, told, like from the other room, was like, hey, you know, uh, Fields is down. He's out. I go, he's out. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, Jesus Christ. I don't even know who the backup is. Like, Burntent, Bursent, Bressent, some stupid name. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, he came in and threw an interception, I think. I don't know. So he just did what Justin Fields would have done. I mean, but he's not going to get you 300 yards. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, throw it to DJ Moore and let DJ Moore run for 50. Hey, how hard is that? Well, Fields has done it one game so far this year, so he's off the kid. All right, yeah. Fields can't do it every damn week because yeah. let's just be honest. Well, it's we got to wait and see now. Now he's got to get back, and who knows how? And you're talking about guys hitting the IR. Like I'm talking superstars. You know, Justin Jefferson, he hit the IR. He's gone for four weeks. Was it a quad or a hamstring? Hamstring, I think. Um, I think and everybody else is just starting to pile on. It's like the hell is going on? And I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. It just, it seems like injuries are just always so prevalent and just lingering around. There was a time where you didn't worry about that shit. Like it didn't happen. Yeah. You'd have like a running back blow a knee out, you know, some Pittsburgh or, or Baltimore running back that blew a knee out. That's happened every freaking year. And they're like, all right, well, that's it. No, no more, you know, no more injuries. 
it, and like our pick em league is crazy this week, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, the people that are at the top are typically the people that are at the bottom. Like <laughs> they, they got lucky. They're like, like Prickman's number one right now. Okay. He's never been number one ever any week in the six years we've done this league. And he's been in it. He's never been, he's never won a week. And he's, did he pick the Cowboys? Oh, let's see here. He probably did. Oh, he didn't. No, he's uh, he's a Washington guy, but his nephew plays on the. Yeah, plays he on took the, the he took the Chargers. Yeah, so if he gets if he gets it right, I guess he hangs in there. Depending on tiebreakers, I was telling Chance about it too. I was like looking, I go, bro, there's like ten people in second place with ten points, and like seven people with eleven points. I go, it's gonna be a wild ass. Like it's gonna come down to, uh, you know, the tiebreakers and shit this week. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's just. Like I'm like normally I'm like right there towards the top and like this week I'm 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 down 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 yeah. down down I'm down by three this week you know yeah. um, it's it's just, tough every weekend week out and then you think you got one figured out you're like oh this would be awesome you know I tied in like I think I, and also let's not let's not uh, gloss over the massive win the first time in franchise history the New Jersey Jets beat the Philadelphia Eagles right. Like it's that was that was a, that was a surprising stat to me that they've never beat them. Like, how the hell have you never beat them? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh. if I knew that, I've been betting on them every single every twice a year for like the last last fifteen like, years. At a certain point in time, it's gonna it's gonna break, right? But for it right. to be this year was crazy, especially because like the Jets didn't have Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner was out. Yep. And I'm like, okay, you're down your number one cornerback. That's not going to bode well for you guys. But then I saw yeah. I saw Swift had a nice little fumble. I didn't see what else he did, but you know it was a uh, it was a game that I had on because I think it was on the a- the CBS channel it was AFC game, right? And so I had that on just to have it on, um, but it was really not keeping my attention until the end. Like I was just I just did not care. It looked it was kind of sloppy. It was kind of that's not a catch. Ooh. Is that a catch? It looks like it slipped. Ah, they hit the ground. I don't know. We'll see what they do. But uh, this weekend, I actually got to sit down and relax on the couch and and watch some football. And if not, I was running in and out of the room. Like it started the day off with like Lizzie cleaning out her closet, so we had the game on in the room. And so I'm sitting there watching. Listen, I don't I don't like the new red zone. I don't like the red zone. Uh, I, I don't like. I need Andrew Siciliano. He, he jumps around too much, right? It's, it's or- very like just everywhere. <laughs> And if and you get him where he goes silent, he's like on a piss break or a smoke break or something like that. You don't hear from him in like 20 minutes. Like, you know, all of a sudden the other people are just clicking, you know, clicking buttons and shit. He's out back just smoking one, talking he's shit. Back with ben Affleck, just like. <sighs> Not even but, an exaggeration. <laughs> speaking of the Philly game, it's good to see a DeAndre Swift in midseason form as he has. 10 rushes for 18 yards this week with a, a long of nine. So how many points he put up? I don't know. He had eight catches for 40 yards That'll and work. a touchdown, but there you go. also had a fumble. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's Swift. enough right there. I mean, you're talking 20 points. You're getting output like that from him. That's just completely unexpected. And he's had a pretty good year so far. I think Miles Sanders was out too. So put him a little bit more in the spotlight, but it was, a, it was a tough game. It was a defensive oh. game. Miles Sanders just, plays on a different team. So, wait, who? Oh, what? Oh, oh, Miles Sanders plays for uh, Carolina now, right? That's why yeah. Chuba Hubbard was getting all the action. Okay, okay. There you go. I knew he was out, and I think they're. <laughs> well, like, oh, wait, who's, who's, the, who's the other guy for Philly then? Because Philly uh, had a Scott. guy that was out. Scott has been out, but he's he's back. Um, Penny, but I mean they haven't really played Penny, which is crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, they went out to go sign him and then just said, nah, bro, we're good. Meanwhile, Penny's like doing all these interviews, talking about how he's healthier than he's ever been. He feels great. And then they're like, okay, here's two carries. Yeah. So Swift is uh, right now the uh, RB1 out there. You got Kenneth Gainwell behind him and then Boston Gainwell, Scott and Rashad uh, Penny. I think Gainwell was a scratch this week. If I'm not Gain- mistaken. Gainwell was the, the starter at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And so Swift is taking over. Hey, Swift looked good out there. Hey, good for him. Um, you know, he was yeah. just a heartbreaker over there in Detroit because they didn't really know what to do with him. Utilize him, he was hurt. Then you had Jamal oh. Williams. Every time they get close to the end zone, they just handed him the ball. Say, just fall in the big guy. He goes, I can do that. And I'm going to make a crazy Pokemon sound when I do it. His intros 
You know, when they had like Sunday night football or some shit like yeah. that, they go down and think, oh my God, he was great. He was so excited to be there. I love I, that I, shit. Dude, I, I love Jamal Williams. It sucks he got hurt, you know, there with New Orleans. I was actually excited about him this year with New Orleans, but mm-hmm. it just, you know, I I was okay with the Lions moving on, you know, moving on and, and signing David Montgomery and drafting Jamar Gibbs. Um, Gibbs hasn't played the last couple of weeks. He's dealing with a, an injury right now, so hopefully he yeah. gets back this week, especially with if Montgomery's going to miss some time with a rib injury. Um, but I, I've been – I've been happy with the I, – I told I told everyone when we signed Montgomery, I thought Montgomery was going to do great, and he has so far. Yeah. He's played great so far this year, you know. He was um, great. He was great when he was in he, uh, – played for Chicago too. I he mean, was, he, he, he was numbers. really with Chicago on a shitty team with a shitty offensive line. Won me a he damn put championship. A, yeah, put, you on, put, put him on a team with a good offensive line a, and a team that's good that they're starting to get – there's a lot of buzz rolling around. You know, we took care of Tampa's. No, Tampa's not like one of the best teams in the league, but they were four and one and they were playing good offensively. And we held them to two field goals, you know, it, in Tampa. Yeah, no, they're not good. They're in one of the in worst. There. They're in the, one of the worst divisions in the NFC. Are they NFC? They're NFC, right? NFC yeah. South? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the other one, yeah, it's like the end. It's just another. Terrible NFC division. It really is. But yeah, no, they were when they said, Oh, we got uh two first place here. Who the hell's in the first place? <laughs> I, I didn't believe either team was in first place. Like, what year is it? But then I realized, you know, I was like, Oh shit, you know, there, there you go. Oh, what's yeah. a, what do we got a replay of? What are we showing here? I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. We're getting ready to see Dak get sacked here. They tried to snap the ball. The referee was between Dak. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it was. I was like, Jesus Christ! They gave me Cam Newton feels or whatever. You're right. <laughs> exactly. like, Jesus Christ! They got back to the line of scrimmage. He tried very hard. All right, let's re, uh, we're 30 minutes in. Let's talk about this beer real quick, just to re uh, recap what we have got going on here. Um, so we're Goose drinking Island. the same, yeah, same beer, but two different years. Yes. Now, okay. I think yours, uh, the aromas and stuff, is slightly different than mine. But yeah, Bourbon County. Uh, stout aged in bur- bourbon bail barrels. It's a 2020 version. This is 14.2 percent alcohol by volume. I got intense aromas of charred oak, vanilla, caramel, and smoke. Now I do get the charred oak, and I get the smoke. There's a little bit of caramel in there, and but the vanilla smooths out the burn. Like it really does assist in the uh, the overall flavor and the uh, where it's just not so damn boozy, right? It's not you know, over the top, like kicking me in the teeth, that vanilla is helping out something. So what do you got? Um, I, mine is 14.3%. So I'm a little bit, a little above you. Um, this one has notes of vanilla, toffee, chocolate, burnt sugar, and dried fruit. Oh, shit. Sure. Okay. It's um, it's pretty good. It's, it's definitely boozy, right? Yeah. I could definitely, it went with each drink. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely got that boozy taste in it. I didn't even take a. I didn't take a picture of mine. I need to grab my my phone real quick so I can grab, snap that. I should have done it earlier because it had a great head on it too. Like but just this is this is one of those beers that like people go places and they're they stand in line to wait for it. Right? Yeah. They're they're there like the or they're there four hours early waiting in line at a place that, to pick this beer up when it comes out. Um, I went to a a liquor store by my house that just opened up recently or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wasn't even looking for this. I actually went there to go. I was getting some other stuff and I got there to the front of the register and they had like right there at the front register, they had a bunch of them. And I was like, Oh, I guess I'll take one of these, you know, uh, type of thing. And, uh, but it's good. I, I enjoy it, Mm -hmm. but I'm not one of these people that's like, it's the be all end all. Right. You, you some people treat this like it's the holy grail of, of beers. And it's it's not like it, I think that throws me off too, because when I like this beer sat in my fridge for a while for a reason. I don't like drinking these beers because you get that that crazy snobbery with it. You know what I mean? Like and when people hype up these beers, they talk it's like, you know what I don't want to drink? Shit like that. And not to say this is shit. This is delicious beer. This is tasty, right? It's There's a, a reason it's this is high on everybody's list and this is, you know, this and that or whatever. But 
you know, when, when that kind of hype comes around and people get like really stupid over it and they'll go buy all the bottles at a store, it's almost like, you know, Buffalo trace. I know Buffalo trace is damn good bourbon whiskey, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's a right. nice alcoholic beverage. Okay. But it's not like, you know, I'm waiting in line to get the damn thing. You want, if you can, no. if you're in Kentucky, just go to the distillery, man, it's there. They got it. And then same thing with like Blanton. So like, I remember we were hanging out one night and this dude was like, oh, you got to try this. You know, hey, you're from Kentucky. And I go, yeah, you know, what's up? And he's like, you, you, <laughs> like, you like Blanton's? I go, no. He goes, what? I go, no. I was like, I just don't drink it. And I was like, and the only reason why I don't like it and I don't drink it is because everybody that drinks, that's an asshole. It's just total knobs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I actually like it, but I tell everyone I don't like it just because fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got my ass thrown out of a whiskey bar one night by stating that opinion. But no, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's um, you know, it's just a, you know, shit just gets weird. People go overboard and they oh, just shit gets hyped up. It's not like they're making any more money on the bottle because they sell the bottle to the retailers for this price. You know what I mean? I like whiskey. I bet whiskey. What's up, TJ? And which is fine. It's the secondary bullshit of people getting it like they're fucking beanie babies or, you know, whatever. And like, you know what? I got this uh, custom uh, limited edition, you know, whatever. It's like, dude. But yeah, I know. I Hell, even Zach. Zach got his hands on a couple and he got it on one of those Van Winkles, which is a crazy expensive bottle. And he was like, I go, damn, bud, you got two of those uh, Buffalo Trace? He goes, yeah, you can have one if you want. I go, no, no, no. He goes, he got it for my birthday or his wife got it for his birthday. And I was like, oh, man, sit there and enjoy it. I go, I know you're going to enjoy it. I go, but I don't, you know, and I know how much they cost, but I don't know how much they paid. But like, you know, you can go get like a $15 bottle of that shit. (laughs) It's like, look here, I'll drink it, but I'm going to talk shit about the entire time I drink it. You'll drink it and you'll like it. So you have it. It's like that, that beer I got when I went up to Michigan, uh, the KBS the KBS one, right? Yeah. And it was one of their their limited edition ones that they release on a yearly basis, kind of like the the Bourbon County, right? Mm-hmm. And I was I was at the Myers with my brother. We're walking through, and we're walking past the same cab. He goes, "Oh, he just stops down." He's like, "Holy crap!" I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Dude, they have this beer here." I'm like, "Okay." It's, he goes, "Dude, this is." He's like, "I got a buddy who goes out to the brewery every year and waits in line to to buy this and stuff." Like, and like, he actually, he like FaceTime his, his friend while he was there and showing him, he's like, dude, give me like six bottles. I, I want them all, blah, blah, blah. I, he was like, he was like, you can get it. I was like, sure, I'll grab a bottle. Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more power, capability, and savings with the full lineup of new Ram trucks during the Black Friday sales event going on all month long. Lease a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Bighorn for $429 per month. Visit our two convenient metro locations in Blair or Bellevue or online anytime. Lease for 42 months, 10,000 miles per year with approved credit. Tax title license extra. $2,500 down plus first payment and $299 dock fee to its signing. Example stock number BC230242. Offer expires 1130-2023. See dealer for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And I, I grabbed one and I think it sat here for like a year before we drank it. Right. Yeah. It was one of those where I had it and I was like, oh, yeah, I got this beer that's like apparently a popular, you know, um, and it was a brewery. that I mean, we've had several beers from KBS and we we've enjoyed every beer that we've had from there. Uh, but, yeah, it was just one of those where it was just like, yeah, mm. I drank beer once. Uh, good stuff, but have your tried acid it's best when you get it straight from the source the source is batteries <laughs> so uh, uh, someone told me that you put, like you know those nose ring those little bull rings or whatever that come out of you know you people put a nine volt battery up to it or something yeah <laughs> This will start I've heard, your that. <laughs> heard that before. Maybe like a movie or something. I don't know. Like zip. 
but yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this one's going down fine. It you know you get the the bourbon feel, you get the bourbon like the whiskey feel to it, the taste. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. I just never done that for beers, you know. Like it's never on me to do it. It's never. I've never done it with bourbon either. I've never done it with whiskey or sitting out. I'm going to overpay for this bottle. I'm like you're still going to drink it, right? Like you know. Then you get all a couple. Well, you're not. If you're you're waiting in line, you're not overpaying for it. You're paying retail price for it. The people that are overpaying are the people that are buying it on the secondary market, right? Well, some of those stores will mark that shit up though. Yeah, but oh man, you just got rocked. Oh god, I'm waiting for the. Ooh. I'm always like 30 seconds behind. Is it uh, Herbert Mike, against it? No, yeah. Oh yeah, god. Mike, oh. He and was, then Mike has held his finger. You even see weird. him how he. Uh, I mean, that right there, like it doesn't get called. Like all this other weird shit gets called, but like that one, you, he drove him into the ground. Like he seriously drove him into the ground. Yeah. And people are already blaming the refs on this game. I'm like you're up by three. Shut up. Like you're you're fine. Just chill out. We'll see where the oh, game just... You keep ruining it for me. I didn't ruin anything yet. I just said, did he just... Oh! Oh, 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 oh that's, that oh, sucks. Oh, oh, I really oh. wanted the Cowboys to go into the bye week at 3-3. Three and three. Like... They oh, these games. It, 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 who, that lady, somebody, because they just showed her again. Look. Really? Yeah, look. Hold on. She's not happy this time. Yeah, Justin Herbert's wife. She's very, very sad. <laughs> Shut up. Well, yeah, I know the 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 Bolts this year are just they've got problems. Like seriously, I mean, but you know the Cowboys, they're going to be excited about beating anybody. They don't win against good teams, and the Chargers <laughs> are no slouch though. To be honest with you, I mean the Chargers have a really good team, but they just can't put it together. Right? They the cannot. Chargers, they start every year off bad. Mm-hmm. No matter, it, this goes back to the Philip Rivers days. Yeah. This goes back to Drew Brees days, right? This goes back Jim Harbaugh days. Let's 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 take it all back to Jim Harbaugh back there. But uh, yeah, they it just go. They just they don't start off good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they yeah. always finish the year strong, but then they don't do anything in the playoffs. You know, they they go up by like forty, and then they let you know. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, who threw five picks in the first half, come back and throw six touchdowns in the second half, and they lose. You know, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just sitting on here guessing. Is this, um, but, years? Is this one of the years where I, we, I picked this up a couple of years back, and I was like, wait, hold on. The Cowboys, they get a winning record. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Have they beat anybody with a winning record, and have they lost anybody with a non-winning record? You know what I mean? Like, they, they don't lose – they lose the good teams, but they only beat bad teams. And here's another example. Like, all the teams they have beat suck. But you're right. Yeah. The Chargers won't be good until week 10. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, they'll turn it on but, and make it to the playoffs. But at that point, like, I, I don't – I think Staley's going to get canned. The, their coaches. It, here in the next week or two, he's, he's going to end up getting canned. And you're yeah. going to get a new coach in there. Um, and it's – who, who's going to end up taking over? Is Kellen Moore going to end up taking over? You know? Yeah, uh, but, no well, well, you say that, but the Cowboys' offense this year is worse than it was mm-hmm. with without Kellen Moore. Yeah. So if you have Kellen Moore there, the Cowboys are actually probably a, a better team because that offense ran a lot better when he was there coaching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I... I yeah. Yeah, they haven't beat anybody. They beat the, they, they beat, beat the Giants. Who they're terrible. The Jets. I mean, the Jets did win this week against Philly, right? Oh, okay. yeah, but <laughs> but they they sucked. They got lucky on that one, and then they lost. They got that their ass handed to them by the Cardinals. Right. <laughs> they they beat the Patriots, but who doesn't beat the Patriots these days? Dude. And then the Niners just curb stomped the shit I, out of them. I, I picked the Patriots to win this week. I'm like, dude, they've just gotten curb stomped the last two weeks. There's no way Belichick's gonna lose a Josh McDaniel. Right, because Josh McDaniel is an awful coach. We yeah. can all agree on that one. Yeah, and he, uh, the Raiders aren't that good, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, they lost again. Um, I don't know, man. So here's my question to you, and I'm going to ask Twitter as well. So is it now on officially that the Cowboys are heading back to the Super Bowl? Uh, did the Cowboys win this week? Yes. 
then yes, they're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> they could be one in five right now, or one in four because we're what? No, we're six weeks in, so they could be one in five right now. Yeah, and just won this one, and Cowboys fans be like, "This is where it turns around. This is where we rally. This is where we make the playoffs and we head to the Super Bowl and we win that mother." Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, like. Point out, point out the lies in that statement. <laughs> I got, I got to fit type of this because I'm like, no, nah, I got to get this out, and I'm about half cocked anyway. So I'm like, this is gonna look good anyhow. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're you're one beer deep and you're feeling great, right? I'm like, telling you, this is how we should be doing. This is how we should be living life anyway. It's just one beer. It's all I need. I just need one beer. Oh Jesus, calm down. Oh, bring it all down now. Bring it all down. But yeah, no, the uh, here's the thing. Cowboys fans, chill out. You guys still suck. Um, you beat a subpar Chargers team. Uh, get over it. Beat somebody beat somebody with a winning record. And then we'll talk. But they no, you got cur- you got curb way. stomped. I mean curb stomped. Mm-hmm. They played the Edward Norton of the NFL in, in the, in the 49ers. Bite the curb. And, and they, yeah, exactly. He walked up to him to bite the curb. And he's like, no, 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 man. No, no, no. Bite the curb. And they did. And they just, mm. like pictures and shit. They're all snapping. I mean, when they beat like a mediocre team, they, they fucking throw themselves a parade. Like I know I, every I, week's important. It is important, right? Them getting a win is very important to the, yes. the biggest group of assholes on earth. Maybe but, they, <laughs> you've got to get the wins, right? You, it, you've got 17 games a year. Every win counts. You mm-hmm. need to get every win that you can. Right. Uh, and if you say you're a good team, you should be the team that's not that great right now. Right, right. You know, The Chargers are 2-2. Two and two. If you say you're a good team and you're one of the best, best teams in the NFC, you should be at a 2-2 two and two Chargers team. Damn. They go on the bye week and then they have to come back and play the Rams. At least they'll be home for the Rams. So that's three straight California teams. Uh, that's going down October 29th. And then they got a tough one against the Eagles. They got to head to Philly. And then after that, it's pretty much uh, easy peasy city, right? You got the uh, you got the Giants November 12th at home. Then you go on the road to the Panthers, which they're starting to look a little bit better. Bryce Young's starting to put it together still, a little they're, bit. They're still 0 5. But they're starting to put points on the board, is what oh, I'm saying. 0 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if they've had a bye week or not, but yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. They put so. points on the board every week, but they still lose. So, Wait. well, no, they don't. Hold on. Let me look at the numbers real quick. So they put up 10 week one, 17 week two, 27 against the Seahawks. That's not bad. 13 against the Vikings, 24 against the Lions, uh, and then 21 against the Dolphins. So, so they put points on the board every week. Like I said, that's not bad. Uh, I mean, if you can put up 21, shit, that ain't terrible. That's not. The problem is it's usually in garbage time when you collect those. Points. Right. Like the 27 against the Lions, like 14 of them were when they were down by like 30. So it's like, How I about know, Jets, I bro, I almost text you too about those Jets, man. I, Cause me and me and TJ will always text her and like uh, the Jets games. I'm sitting there firing off like tweets and shit like that. I'm like J E T S Jets, 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 oh, baby. Lizzie, like, redeem, take a drink. Hey, all right. Lizzie. Okay. Round two, name something that's not boring. Laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I like to drink. You like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes his friend sweet. Oh, um uh, but yeah, this week was just weird for the NFL. It was just I don't know, man. Shit was weird. Um I would say so. Like a bunch of terrible teams got wins against tougher teams, oh, starting with the Cowboys. Uh then you got the Browns, you got the Eagles losing to the Jets. I mean, a lot of upsets. Like, I mean, if you put together a nice little card. Nice little parlay, and you slap down a hundred bucks or a thousand, however wealthy that you might be. That's some strong shit right there. 
Like that's that's some that's some good that's some good stuff. So Gil already commented on your post. Who the hell's is that? It now the cowboy that the Cowboys are heading to the Super Bowl just got to win. And Gillum responded with, are they buying tickets for the whole team? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I like jokes. Oh, man. When you said that, I thought you said like Gail or something. I go, who the hell is Gail? (laughs) Gillum. 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 Mr. Michael Gillum. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah Cowboys fans uh, are ridiculous. I, I don't know if there's a worse like maybe we, this is something we need to talk about and go down the list and like actually rank fan bases. But I think just because I don't know if it's because we're close, we, but the Cowboys are top five. Terrible, just asshole. They're they're like the it, Houston Astro fan base of the uh of well, the okay. Well, well, why why do you hate on the Houston Astro fan? They're so annoying. Like here, when they come here, I'm every time I'm around them or something like that over all these years going to the Ranger games and stuff like that. They are the most obnoxious asshole fan base people in the, on the world, on the planet. Like, you know, you know how those fights always break out in the stands and shit. There's a reason they, they fucking break out. It, well, it, it's shit nonstop. It, No, 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 no. The fan, the fights don't break out here in Texas. Fights do not break out between a Texas fan and a fan of the other team, whatever the sport is. So, I mean, it, typically you're talking about two sports. You're talking about the Texas Rangers and you're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Nobody's fighting at the Mavericks games because nobody cares, right? It's just, uh, it's, a it's, a, it's a status thing. It's a status thing. The Mavs, to me, I think the Mavs fan base is one of the worst, honestly. Obnoxious. Just, I'm talking obnoxious, not like just terrible, like with fair weather fans. Well, no, because, I mean, the Mavs games all sell out. It's just yeah. the people that are there, they're not there. They're there as a status thing, right? It's a it's so oh, pretentious. Oh, yeah, right. It, every it's chick there is, every chick there is Han Solo. Every single damn one of them is dressed as Han Solo. As the year goes on, but while it's still warm outside, <laughs> it's ho it's ho McGee yeah. out there. But oh, all the ho dudes Ged is broken out. Uh, is broken. Yeah. But the dudes dress like they all uh, let me tell you the typical dude, white dude. We'll say white dude. That goes to the Mavs game. They have an affliction shirt on. No, uh, no, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. They got cowboy boots. They got jeans. Okay. They have a button-up shirt, and then with a vest, like a uh, one of those fleece vests on top. Or, it's it's definitely a vest of some sort, like fleece, or it's like a uh, like uh, fly fishing uh, like vest. A- like a puffy vest, yeah. Like, uh, what, what what was the uh, what was the jacket that was big back in the day when we were kids in like high school and stuff like starter that? Starter like, jackets. No, not starter. Uh, triple goose. You know what I'm talking about? Triple goose. Nah, there's something. It, Lizzie might be able to they, know. What they it had is. The, they had the feathers in them, right? Yeah, it yeah. was all feathered, right? <laughs> a puffy puffy vest, uh, usually in bright colors, um. You you might have a, a few guys that are like too cool for school, and they've got like a jean vest on, um, but yeah, no, just definitely, and they're just I don't know, man. Like that's why I like going to I like going to Stars games. Like I have more fun with the people at Stars games because they just wear Stars jerseys. Members only, jacket, not members only, not members. It's a little, only. It's a little too old. It was like triple goose or something like that. I swear that's a that's a thing. Like you looking up on internet.com. Yeah, I mean, I have the internet in front of me. I mean, there is a triple there's a Canadian goose thing, there's a triple F A T goose, triple fat goose, puff jacket, puffer jacket, triple fat goose, yeah. expedition jacket. I think you yeah. I think you're just going too north, I think. That's northern shit. Yeah, that's well, not you know, it's, I'm that's sorry, not, that's where I was from back then. But that's yeah. what I'm saying, but not uh, but it, it's like that down here. That jacket is it's the same except for it doesn't have sleeves. Um but yeah, just it, it stars. I don't mind going to a stars game. Like I've I've gotten into I I, I most of the stars games that I've gone to have been like Red Wings, Stars yeah. and Red Wings. Yeah. So I'm there decked out in all my Red Wings gear. And this was back in like the the nineties, the the aughts and things like that, back when yeah, one of the first game the one of the first games I went to was 
I moved here in 95. Um, and the Red Wings and Stars played in the playoffs that year. Um, out at Reunion Arena. I went to one game. And it was the one game the Stars won. Like, the, the Wings won that series four games won. I went to the one game that we lost. Um, and it, it, you know what? It, it was it was bad. Uh, it was it was game four, <clears throat> and it was there for the possibility of a sweep, and we lost. But like I, I was there, and this was I was in high school then. Like I was a freshman in high school at this point, right? I'm 15 mm-hmm. years old, mm-hmm. and I'm walking around, and I've got my wing shirt on and stuff like that, and I got all these guys coming up to me talking trash, and I'm just like, "Bro, you've won one." Like, there's it, no it, way you weren't saying anything back. You're a mouthy cunt now. There's no way you weren't like talking shit crazy like the whole time. I, I, my biggest comment back to most of these people was a blind pig gets a kernel of corn every once in a while. <laughs> and they look at me, what? I go, you won one. <laughs> Deal with it. You're not I winning never, another one. I never got the talking shit to other fans. I try to be <laughs> like, hey, man, how you doing? You know, whatever. I don't. Why go out of your way and like just talk shit to people that travel to your stadium? Now, if playoff game, hey, look, I, if it's the playoffs and Dallas starts, I want all star fans there. I, I'm I'm a big fan of don't sell your tickets to the opposing team, uh, don't sell it to anybody that you know that won't be wearing wearing a rocking a Stars jersey or Mavs jersey or whatever. But yeah, I don't have massive problems with that. But no, I, 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 I don't, don't want your way to be a dick to somebody from the other team. Man. You can, and, and I don't even go out on my way. Like if I'm in another stadium, like you've been, you, me, and you have gone to Lions Cowboys before, and the Lions won, and I wasn't walking around talking shit to everybody. Yeah, I was, just, I, I was know. celebrating. You know, we were just doing our thing, right? And then at the end of the game, as we're leaving, I got Lions fans coming up to me, and I'm high fiving Lions fans and stuff like that. But I'm not getting any Cowboys fans faces. But you better believe, because that was one of those games where the Lions were losing early, and we came back and won in the second half. The whole first half, Cowboys fans were in my face, and I'm just like, okay. But then we, when we started winning, I was celebrating with – there was other Lions fans around me, and I'm celebrating with them, and I'm not talking trash to any of the Cowboys fans around me. Like, yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, I was an away fan in Baltimore, and it was great. I was a guest in their house and acted that way. Yeah, and that's what you do. Like, Now, again, w- if I run across other fans – from my team, I will celebrate with them, but yeah. I'm not getting into a Cowboys fan's face and be like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing that." Me and yeah. you, we, we went to uh, the ALCS fans. in uh, what was that? 2011 when they played the Tigers. That's was it. That was the Tigers. Tigers made the playoffs. Yeah, dude, we were we were really good back then, bro. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, we played in the ALCS and we went to that game and. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I, I'm very cordial. You know, I celebrate with the fans of my team, but I'm not in anyone else's face talking s. Yeah. Let also me see because I didn't want to die in Baltimore, right? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it was a seven-game series. The American League walk hard. Wait, oh, no. the New York Yankees faced the American League Division champions, Texas Rangers. That was 2010. Let's check out 2011. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What the hell is that? It even called it. Oh, that's ALDS was the, tar- the Detroit Tigers over the. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. So that was it. 2011. Yeah. There you go. That <laughs> yeah, was Verlander year, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Verlander was there. Uh, it is remarkable how many Cowboys fans have killed other Cowboys fans in parking lot 
altercations. It has to be at least 10 in team history. Yeah. I got my Rangers tattoo the day after the 2010 ALCS. I was there for all the home games. I'm telling you, I all the fights that I've seen, and I've been to like preseason games and fights break out. You would think it was Raiders and Cowboys because we went to the Raiders Cowboys game. We've been to the Bengals Cowboys game, it and it's Cowboys, not, Cowboys. it's Cowboys and Cowboys. They're just stupid ass fucking people. That, Cowboys I mean, fans get to fight with their own team. They don't get in fight with team people from the other teams. No, they don't lose twice that day. That's why, right? <laughs> and they're not going to step up on a Raiders fan because a Raiders fan has seen some shit. Okay, like. He's been through it. All right, he so has seen right. some shit. I'm not fucking with a Raiders fan. Okay. Um, I just don't get it. Like, I don't get it. But yeah, it, like even like a handful of years ago, it was like, oh, there's a shooting. It was in the parking lot. Or, or Cowboy. I'm like, These people are so fucking dumb. Like, do you need to Cowboy be super fan Juan Miguel <laughs> shot Cowboy super fan Jose Leclerc. I'm just saying. Jose Leclerc is the pitcher for the Rangers. Well, he got shot by uh, Juan Samuel. Okay. I hope he's all right. I hope he's okay. We need him. We this need was a him. while back ago. He's good now. He's good now. <laughs> Boy, I definitely need him to show up on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> all these great highlights of Dak hitting players not in stride and below the belt and stuff. Like, oh, man, this guy just tore it up today. Yeah, just. just just a consummate pro. He's he's is the best he gets. He was only mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to go back and look and see who the Chargers actually oh, beat. Crap. Wait a minute. Oh, Van Pelt. I'm not going to say that. What's wrong um, with Van Pelt? Nothing's wrong with Van Pelt. I didn't think that's who he was talking to. I looked over for a second. It's and I, I, yeah, I didn't think it was CD Lamb. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was on. Yeah, we already got that. So Chargers here. Here's the Chargers this year. They lost opening week to the Dolphins, thirty six thirty four. Then lost to the Titans, twenty seven to twenty four in overtime. They beat the Vikings, and then beat the Raiders. So it's like you know, they you don't know what's gonna. You can flip a coin, and that's how that's how it's gonna work. Now the games they've lost. We're home and away games, so it's like there's no telling. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they did put up seven points less than they usually do, it looks like. Yeah. So, I, I sent yeah. you a text if you want to check that real quick. I swear to God, I don't, I don't know if pertinent, I want to. It's, it's pertinent to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can say that. You can say that. It looks like, it looks like uh, Venus Williams or whatever. Yeah, I got you. Why the, who the hell are you talking to Venus Williams with for? You know, she's on those commercials, or is that Serena? I don't it, fucking it know. It could have been Serena. I don't know. It was one of the Williams sisters I swore he was talking to, but no, yeah. apparently it's CD Lamb. I don't know. Did, did CD do uh, okay today? He had seven for like 117. So, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean, Thanks. like when they showed the first uh, half stats or whatever, they're like, yeah, Dak Prescott's eight for eight for 88 yards ago. Okay. Who gives a shit? <laughs> That's like fucking ten yard passes. Okay, <laughs> no one cares. I mean, you know, it's not. It's not like I'm trying to be a hater. I'm just like, you know, I'm realistic. Like, if I if I need to get Melton involved and, and bring Melton on one week and be like, hey, buddy, let's talk right. about it this week. He's gonna be like, it was a win, but it was a win against a bad team. That's what he's gonna say. He goes like, Dak didn't impress me. Eight for eight for fucking eighty yards. Now, like some of these passes, he oh. threw like two or three good passes. That so one I'm is him right there. So real quick, I just saw the the little thing come across the bottom there. It says Anthony Richardson likely out for the season. Yeah, he's got to have surgery. Like he's debating yeah. right now. So so you mania the rest of the it, way. Minshew mania. As I'm as I'm sitting here and I'm looking directly across me is my Minshew pennant from when he was with the with the Jags and I bought that pennant. Yeah, he's got a rough yeah. week. He had a rough week this week, so I don't know. If he's just going against a tougher team or he's lost a step, I don't know what's going on. The Jags had his number. He didn't look good this week. Um, I think Minshew Mania is officially gone. I think it's over. You watch your hooker mouth. And I'm don't you dare, don't you dare besmirch the name of Gardner Minshew ever again. <laughs> don't you can do it. God. Like, let's see, third, let's see. Dallas third team with 50 wins all time on Monday night football. That's because they put them on Monday night football like 40 fucking times a year. 
Like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna eventually get that right. If I get, you know what, and you think about this too. You think about Sunday night football. I didn't give a rat's ass. What did y'all see the cat's comment on your post? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about Henson. See this? Yeah. I, well, I yeah. No, you look at the game last night. They said the, the the Giants were on Sunday night football. I go, why are the Giants on a Sunday night football game? And they were playing the they were playing uh, freaking Buffalo. They were in the game the entire time. They were winning the game almost the entire freaking time. Comes down to the end, a pass to Darren Waller into the end zone. This hooker's got a whole effing handful of, of jersey just, you know, fucking yanking him back and forth, uh, just shaking the shit out of the baby. And, of course, that didn't get called. And it's like, hey, man, look, I don't uh, – that's why I don't care about these no calls anymore. I don't give a shit. The ghost of Waller, you're right about that. They called it the first time Yeah, because it, they had two plays at the end of the game. The first one they called pass interference, and the second one they didn't. And it was one of those where it's 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 kind of like a you call it or you don't. Well, they called it once, and they didn't call it the second time. Yeah. Like, Rex, like I got shit to do, man. I can't sit here all night just giving y'all extra plays. Right, right. So, so Cletus said the idiotic narrative is built up mostly by sour cowboy haters. Ooh. Our last Super Bowl was like thirty years ago. Stop being mad about it. We're not mad about it. Why would I be mad about you assholes not going to the playoffs or making it? Right. A Super Bowl? I think I'm you guys. It, about that. I think you guys suck. I got my own problems. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I got I got my own goddamn problems. You know what I mean? Joe yeah, Burrow can stay off his ass every fucking play. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. So the Cowboys were like ten and one, following a loss since 2021. That's how I knew. Like this game was like they should win because, like, just as statistically speaking and things like that, and they. After a loss, you're generally going against like a worse team. Like you're not going to run a string of like really good teams because one, there's not a really good teams. Like this year has been crazy. The entire league's been turned upside down. I actually wanted to talk to you. I got to send you the run sheet for um for Wednesday because we're going to talk about our our top five NFC and AFC teams and then give our midseason. Well, first third. How about that? Uh, some playoff predictions or something like that. Just a quick talk. Nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing crazy, but just how yeah. everything has changed because, you know, with the Eagles losing, San Francisco losing, things like that, where now you're talking about NFC is kind of flipped upside down. Is there a dominant team? I know no one's going to go 16 and 0 or 17 and 0. No one's going 17 and 0. It's not flipped upside down. They lost. They're not going undefeated. Right. That's just all there is to it. I think you have three teams in the NFC that are all five and one right now. Um, you've got the 49ers, you got the Eagles, and then you have the Lions. Um, you've got some teams that are sitting there at four and two. I know the Cowboys are four and two right now. Yeah. Uh, very unimpressive. They're the worst four and two team in the league. Let's just be honest. Um, I don't see them going anywhere. I think the I think the when you talk about NFC, and we'll talk more about this, obviously, and it'll be for me, it's the the Eagles and the the Niners. I they I think and I hope that they make it to the NFC championship game because I think it'd be phenomenal to have those play again. Those two, two those two teams play for it all. We shit. They, they play in week thirteen. They play in week thirteen. You've got the Eagles and the 49ers in week but thirteen. I, I want them in. I want them in freaking January. Oh, buddy. Not playing in Santa Clara either. I want a freezing ass cold up in Philly. People throwing batteries at Santa and shit. You know what I mean? I want it wild. Uh, real quickly, said, I wish makeup calls were a thing with home plate umpires. Ooh, buddy. Uh, and he said, I trade the next 20 years of Cowboys playoffs for one Rangers ring. Any Rangers fan would do that. Yeah. Okay. Let me sacrifice the Cowboys for the Rangers. I mean, come on. That's a no brainer right there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, the years of undefeated season being possible are over. I, I mean, so. you you ain't you ain't seen uh, an undefeated team. The last one was the, the the Patriots, and that was fifteen years ago. Was it before then? The Dolphins, the perfect season. The, the Dolphins are the only team with a perfect season. Yeah, uh, all the way. Th the Patriots made it all the way to the Super Bowl, then lost to the fucking Giants. Uh, Eli said, "Hey, guess what? I'm not that dumb. Here's a dub." Um, yeah. Let me get two of them. <laughs> Twice. That's a two two of Brady's losses in the Super Bowl are to Eli Manning. Like. Oh God, it's so great. Yeah, Brandon Staley's gone. He's got to be gone. Like oh you know, yeah. On the yeah, final nine yeah, possession. Guy. Whoever's calling the, and it's uh, like Kellen Moore calls the play. So then it's not whose fault is it, right? Then well then you know as, as a head coach you got to get rid of that that guy. 
you have to. So uh, I feel no, like we've been a little you're long. Definitely. What do you think? We we've, we've definitely gone longer than we were going to go thirty minutes, and here we are over an hour in. As I'm nursing the last of this because I need something to drink. I'll, I'll tell you this: like the beer itself, and I'm glad we're kind of going this route with this beer because we're giving it its due. We're letting it sit there at room temperature. We're letting it air just you know age a little bit in the cup just you know let it breathe a little bit you know what in i mean case you don't of- know what we're drinking we're both drinking bourbon county from goose island you're drinking the 2020 version and i'm drinking the 2022 version of it mm-hmm. um both pretty damn good starting to get a little bit of burn Kelmore used to be as uh seen as a coach and waiting yeah there's no way no one's going to turn the fucking reins over to him like there's no way I don't he, so. he will be a head coach in the next 10 years. I mean, sure. In the next 10 years when like all the other people yeah. kind of, you pass know, or let, whatever. Let in the next five years, he'll be a head coach. Nah, Hell, he could be a head coach here in the next couple weeks when they fire Staley. Like, let's just be honest. I like, mean, being an interim coach isn't the same. I don't think they're just kind of like, hey, yeah. but then they'll bring in somebody else. There's no yeah, way. Maybe. He's, he's just, Depending he's, on how they do. I, what did I, I think I saw a stat that was about like defensive I've head coaches and offensive of and offensive head coaches. And it's the defensive ones that win like Super Bowls, but then like the offensive head coaches right now, I think the offensive head coaches like currently in this season, they got like a crazy ass record. Like they're winning like all kinds of games because they get to put well, up a bunch of numbers. But well, Miami's Andy, been Reed, Andy Reed's an offensive coach, right? Yeah. You know, uh Mike McDaniel. Yeah, I do there every day that goes by i love mike mcdaniel more because you just see all the clips of him doing like interviews and stuff like that and pre-game and post-game and throughout the week interviews that he's just the dude is just he's funny he, he's he's got bits yeah yeah and they're and they're all great all of his bits are great yeah absolutely so. now and we'll talk about the Dolphins, I think, later on this week or something like that. But, yeah, no, I mean, you you start talking about, like, you know, them being a good team in a powerhouse in the AFC. They're, like, the teams that they've just absolutely throttled, they're, like, 1-24 in or some shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's some god-awful number where they're beating the shit. They're just beating the shit out of terrible teams. But, hey, you can only win who's in front of you, but you better beat the shit out of them while you can. But that's the thing, though. Like, that's what makes you a good team is you beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Yeah. Right? Um. Yeah, you have to play who's placed in front of you. But when you have teams that go out there, like all of the Dallas Cowboys, you're supposed to be a good team. You should have kicked the shit out of the Arizona Cardinals. But no, they kicked the shit out of you. And yeah. that's what tells me you're not a good team. you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat, the teams that are placed in front of you. And that's just all there is to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I thought it was funny. It was, it was like last week or the week before. They were talking to Mike McDaniel about a play. They talked to McDaniel and Tua about a touchdown play. And they talked to Tua first. And he's like, so funny thing about that was they called the play in and I didn't hear it right. So I called this other play and we scored a touchdown, but that's not the play that Mike McDaniel called. And then they talked to Mike McDaniel like, hey, Tua admitted he heard the play wrong. And he goes, yeah, no, uh, apparently we got to start letting him just call the plays because that was a touchdown. <laughs> Run the touchdown play. The fucking touchdown run. Can you the hear problem, me? The touchdown the play. The problem was, no, McDaniel called for the first down play. Right, right, right. And he was like, oh, what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What? <laughs> I think you said the touchdown play, guys. Let's do the touchdown play. Because uh, what? <laughs> uh, run the first down play. Yeah, what? I can't hear you. Where You must be breaking up. I don't know if you're going through. I think I'm in a tunnel. I <laughs> 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 kill. Go. Just fucking go. Not anymore. Oh man. I mean, I love him. I, I love well Tyree Kill is actually there. Yeah, in, in Miami. I miss him being in uh Kansas City. I mean he so was does, so does Kansas City. You know that's be right. honest. <laughs> you know that's right. Let me knock this out real quick so we can get the hell out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm done. Let's finish these up. A final thoughts, the 2022 version is is pretty damn delicious. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh it's it is very boozy. Um, but, but good. Like it's, it's, it's boozy, but it's, it's good. It's delicious. I definitely enjoyed it. Glad I drank it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mine was, uh, <clears throat> I started off and it wasn't as boozy, but as we went on, 
it was definitely catching up to me. And it became the perfect sipper beer. It became the perfect, we'll say bye to Lee real quick. Yeah, Lee, Lee said, Deuces Boys, see you on Wednesday for the NBA Fantasy Draft. <clears throat> Glad you're in the NBA League there, Lee. Appreciate it, brother. We'll Thanks definitely see you on too. Wednesday. But yeah, this thing got more boozy as I drank it. Um, and that's, and, uh, like I was saying, it, it's almost the perfect weather to have this beer, too. I feel like we should be outside making s'mores yeah. next to the campfire with the TV. You know, we're watching Monday Night Football. Um, it's outdoor weather at its finest. This is a perfect beer for outdoor cool weather, fall time. And, uh, yep. you know, it, but it is cool in the house. It's still cool in here. But I think that this beer just, it, it was perfect. Perfect call for tonight. Perfect call. I, I agree. For sure. Yeah. But I think it's going to be it for today. I think yeah, we're going we'll to uh, get out of here. I think we might record a couple. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe a little clear the fridge action. Yep. You know, I think that's what we, we got up, uh, up next is some clear the fridge stuff. I think this was the only similar beer that we had, even though it wasn't the same year. But, you know, hey. Yeah. Well, yeah, Thank folks. You um, yeah. Thank <laughs> you guys for we appreciate you. And we're not scared to say it first, in case you haven't heard it, but we love you. As always, I'm Alan. I'm Rapid Dave. We'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. Be sure to catch the stream Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. We're going to load up that NBA fantasy football draft. We're going to draft after that. Also, before the show, if you're local, come on out to Maverick Harley. Hang out with us. Your pals, Alan and Rapid Dave, along with Zach from Outfit Brewing. Check out some hot bikes, some hot women, some awesome times, some cold beers. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Strikeout Beer. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch 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 -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.